In this video, I wanna give you a review and overview of Antelope Audio's Zen Go. Check it out. What's up, my name is Matthew. On this channel, I'll do setup videos, tutorials, and overviews like this one. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. So the Zen Go Synergy Core is at four in, eight out, USB-C audio interface and it is completely bus powered. So this means that you do not need a power adapter for it to work with your computer. It has high quality ADDA conversion that has 127 dB of headroom. It has two console grade preamp. It's equipped with the 64 bit acoustically focused clocking technology. It runs on Mac OS and Windows and it comes with 37 different effects that you can use with this particular device. So what I wanna do in this video is break this down to about three different sections. I wanna cover the hardware and I wanna cover the actual software that comes with it, as well as give you a practical you know, example of what this can actually do. Cause I know I watched a couple videos about this whenever you know this thing came out. And when I got it, I was still completely lost on what it actually does and what you could do with it. So I kinda wanna give you an example of what it could do and before we get completely into it, Antelope Audio did send this unit out for me so I can review it. And I wanna thank them for sending it out so I can go ahead and do this video for you guys. With that said, let's go ahead and get right into the video. So I do wanna say it does come in this box and inside the box they give you, um, what they give you is like a getting started card and some warranty information. And then there's a USB-C cable that it does come with. Now the USB-C cable does come with this adapter right here so if you have you know a USB-A port you can go ahead and use that but in my case I'm using USB-C to USB-C so I can go ahead and plug this directly into my computer. So the price of the Zengo Synergy Core is running about $499 US American. I will leave links for this item in the description of this video so make sure you do check the description of this video for links for this item so you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the connections on the back of the Zengo. So if you look on the back here, we got our discrete preamps. So these are microphone preamps that do have phantom power and they are also line in as well as instrument inputs so you can go ahead and switch that on the front of the audio interface or with the software over here we got our monitor so we got our balanced quarter inch out monitor for the left and right and then we got our RCA out for left and right now these are the main outs right here and they are actually linked together as indicated by this line here and here right here we got our SPDIF input and output. Okay, so this is where we're getting our four inputs. So you got one, two, three, four inputs for the Zengo right there. Now right here, this is not a Thunderbolt port. This is actually a USB port, and this indicates that it's gonna be good for charging. Now right here, we got our USB port, and you can see it says A, USB. This is the actual port that we're gonna to use to connect to our computer or whatever device we are using. Now the reason why it does have this port here, you can actually plug your Zengo into the wall so you don't take any power from your portable device. And this way you can have longer record sessions. And there's also a feature where you can actually charge your portable device, whatever you're using, your tablet or your phone with this as well. So you can have even longer recording sessions with this device. And then to the right of that, you got your Kingston lock. Now on the bottom of this, we got four different rubber things to keep it in place on the desk there. We got ventilation on the sides, okay? I'll cover the top in a second. And on the front, we got a little bit of branding, and then we got our headphone out one and headphone out two. Now the good thing about your headphone out one and two is that you can have separate mixes for your different headphones. So if you wanna monitor what's going on through headphone out one, you could do that, and then you can send headphone out two to whoever you might be recording, and they can have their own mix. So if they wanna hear themselves, you could turn them up in their mix, and it's not gonna affect what you're actually hearing. So let's go over the top of this thing. We got our screen, three buttons, and then we got our encoder here. So I'm gonna actually just plug this in. Now remember, this does go into the USB port, okay? And then it's gonna go into my laptop. Now, as soon as I plug that in, the power is gonna come on, it's gonna boot up. Now, when I first got this unit, the display was all the way dim, so I did turn up the brightness of the display to 100% so I could see it better. The display is easy to read. I found it very clear for myself to read. 
Now on the screen, you do have some information. It will show you your inputs levels here and it does show you what your clocking is up there and what your sample rate is. Now the front has a clean design. It does feel like brushed metal right there and uh, the build quality feels solid to me. And right here we got our gain button, our headphone monitor button, and then our antelope button. Now when you see this, um, you know, it doesn't have a lot of knobs for your inputs right because you can adjust everything with the one knob that is included you know that's one of the trade-offs you get for a nice clean looking surface but it's not really that big of a deal because the screen gives you the feedback on what everything is so if i push the gain button you can see i can have my mic preamp level right there it shows it what it is so it's very easy to read now what you can also do is once you press that gain button you can press this button so this button actually presses so let me get that gain back. So we can see this is mic preamp one and it's set to high Z and then the gain is at 33 dB. If I press this button, I can change it to the mic input. If I press it again, I can change it to line input and you can see each of the three have a different value, right? And if I press it again, it's gonna take me back to that high Z. So that's all for mic preamp one. If I push gain again, I'm gonna get mic preamp two and that's gonna correlate with a2 on the back. So mic preamp 2 correlates with A2 and then mic preamp 1 is going to correlate with A1 on the back. And you can see right there this is A2 and this is A1. Now these buttons do have secondary functions as well so that's one of the learning curves with this device is you do have to kind of figure out the hidden features of it but they're all there and I'll go ahead and cover a few of those in a second here but right here we got HP slash mon button. So if I press that, it's gonna give me my monitor level. Right now I have it muted. As I can see right there, it says muted. If I hit it again, it's gonna bring the volume back. If I turn this particular dial, it's gonna turn it up or down. All right, it's very easy to move and it's giving me clear feedback, right? If I push it again, it's gonna give me the, the level of the headphone volume. And if I push it again, it's gonna give me the level of my headphone two volume. If I push it again, it's back to monitor. Now, if I'm on this screen and I press that in, it's gonna actually mute that particular device. So if I wanna unmute it, I just tap it again. I can do the same thing with the headphone. Now underneath that, we got our antelope button, which is basically takes you back to home, wherever you're at. So if I go into gain and then press antelope button, it's gonna take me back to the home screen. Let's go ahead and cover like this secondary function. So I push and hold down gain. It's gonna give me the control menu where I can power it off. I can see our clock source, I can see our sample rate, and then we got monitor trim as well. And then we got our line out trim and our brightness. So that's where you're gonna control the brightness of your screen. And if you hold down your HP Mon button, then you get your system menu. It's gonna give you your device in info, you know, your screensaver settings, style, your power source. So that's where you're gonna change your power source if you want it to be, uh, you know, from your A USB port or this second port right there. And then you got your factory reset. Now the secondary function of the antelope uh, button here is your screen brightness. So that's how you can change your screen brightness. Now another really cool feature about this device that isn't clear when you look at the top of it is you can actually save the settings of your hardware. You can have up to five different settings that you can save. So what you could do is press the analog button and the HP button at the same time. And then you get different presets. You can have up to five different presets. I can save this configuration into one if I wanted to. Presets been saved. And what I can do is actually recall that by pressing antelope and gain. And then it says preset restore. Then I just pick which preset I want to restore. And up to five. And then I just load it up. Like say if I wanted to restore preset one. It loaded up preset one. Now, if you want to turn phantom power on from the device, it's easy to do as well. You just push your gain knob, make sure you do have your mic selective. So I'm going to push that again to make sure the mic is selected. All right, and you can see mic is selected. Then I'm going to hold this rotary knob down and it's going to turn on 48 volt right there. Hold it again and then it turns it off right there. So whenever you get your device, you wanna make an account for Antelope Audio. You do need to make that account so you can activate your new device and it's gonna link all your software to your device. 
And this way you can go ahead and get going with that. After you created an account with Antelope Audio, what you need to do is go into your account and then go to your dashboard. It says activation, step-by-step -step activation. You just click that. It's literally gonna tell you step-by-step -step how to do this. All right, you just pick your device. And then once you pick your device, you simply download the launcher for Mac or Windows. And then once you download that, you basically run it and it's gonna tell you how to activate it. Once you activate your device, you're gonna have access to your software and your orders. Say that you went ahead and purchased software separately or got a software bundle, you would go over here to your dashboard and then press claim features. And then you would put the code in, you would claim those features. Now Antelope Audio will bundle this already, like I said, with 37 different plugins. I'll kind of go over that right now. But you can also get additional plugins depending on when you buy it. So like right now, there's actually a bunch of free plugins that come with this device up till September 30th, I believe, 2021. But it looks like right now they have a software of the week as well. So basically, if you check out the bundle, you can see different um, stuff that comes with it right here. And now what's good about Windows right now is they do have AFX to DAW. So they do have that option available for Mac and Windows. And what that basically means is you can use your plugins in the control panel that I'm about to show you, or you can use those plugins inside of your DAW or your digital audio workstation. So before I get too ahead of myself, I do want to show you the software store. And if you go to the software store, you can select the Zen right here, the Zen Go, and you can see all the software that's available for this one. But what's cool is there's this free button right here. So these are all the softwares that come with it already. There is a variety of free plugins that come with it. There's 37 plugins, including compressors, tuners, gates. We got EQs. We got different guitar cabinets. So we have our guitar amps and guitar cabinets. And we got this reverb right here, as well as some preamp and channel strips. So let's talk about the Zengo Synergy Core. So why is it called Synergy Core? It's because it has these chips in it that enable you to run plugins and those plugins are gonna have basically near zero latency. So basically they're real time effects that you can actually monitor live when you're recording. I'm gonna give you an example of that later on in this video, so make sure you do check that out before you leave this video. So you get 37 effects. How do you use these effects? This is what I wanna show you right now in this next section. So let's cover the Antelope Launcher. So let's go ahead and open that. So you're gonna to have to log in. Once you log in, this is what's gonna show up. So it's gonna show you everything you have connected to your computer. So once you get all this set up, you can just start up your computer and get going. You know, you just run the launcher and you have everything going, but it does take a few minutes to get set up. So that's why I'm showing you this, right? So we got our analog launcher and this is what we're using right now. So this is where you're going to actually update your drivers and your bundle. So right here's my bundle version. This is what's with this particular device. Then we got our plugins. So I have the AFX to DAW plugin right here. So this is where I would update that. And then over here, we got our different drivers. So this is where we would update our USB drivers. All right, so let's go back to our devices. Let's go to start control panel. And this is gonna give us our control panel. All right, so this is what the control panel looks like. Now, if you're new to this, and if you're used to just an audio interface, you're not gonna know what to do with this control panel. But this control panel is your friend. It's kind of like a real-time mixer. And this is where we could put our effects in. We could put our effects on these inserts right here. And we can get real-time effects and be able to hear them while we're recording. So that's what's really cool about this. So if you look up here, we got our preamps. Now we can control our preamps with our hardware, which I showed you earlier. So all that, all the same settings are in here. So like I was saying, this is where we control mic, line, our high Z. Same, it's the same settings that are in the hardware. Um, right there, you can link these together. Now you can see as soon as I link those together, this turns green and then when I change the input right there, it changes both of them. Okay, so this is input one, this is input two. Now, if we put it on mic, you can see we could turn on our uh, 48 volt. Now, you do need to press control and then left click to do this when you use the computer. Right here, we have our preamp little channel here. All right, so here's our phase inversion. We can turn it on or off right there and the same thing there. And then our 48 phantom power right there. Now, if we did have one of these other uh, mic modelings, we could use that. So that's our input section. I'm not going to cover everything 
in here, I just wanna cover the main things, what I'm gonna show you, how you can actually use this and it be really functional for you. So if I click here, this is our headphones and our monitor. If I click here, we got our digital outputs and then we got our doll in and outs. So we can have eight different inputs into our doll from here, from this control panel. And then our doll can send back eight different playback options here. So we got record one through eight, that's going into our doll. And then we got play one through eight. So we can actually send audio from our digital audio workstation back into here and then apply effects. So this is really good to know. We can change what's going into each one of our eight channels by clicking here. We can select our preamps, our emu mic, our computer play, our SPDIF, and we can mute them, and we can do test oscillator one and two. By default, the first two channels are preamp one and preamp two. The second two channels are computer play one and computer play two, which is good because that's how we're gonna monitor our digital audio workstation. These were actually set to something else. I just muted them because I'm not actually using them at this moment. This is all for our monitor slash headphone out one. Down here, we got headphone out two. This is where we can control the monitor for who we were recording, if we were recording somebody, and they had the headphones in the second output here. We can change their mix here. I do wanna point out up here, we do have our sessions. We can save our settings in here. So if we wanna save different things that we have set up in here, we can save that here, and then we can load it from here which is very functional. So say you had your guitar set up a certain way and you're recording that, you can save that session and then recall it later. But let's go and get into like the practical application of this. I'm gonna open Ableton Live. So I'm using Ableton Live 11. All right, so I got Ableton Live open. What I wanna do is just record some guitar in here and show you how you can record guitar, monitor the effects live, and then even go back and apply effects to what you recorded if you want to using the effects with the Antelope Audio Zen Ghost Energy Core. Let's get into this section. Let's say we wanna record some guitar. So what I wanna do is plug my headphones into the Zen Go, into headphone one. Now I'm gonna use my Fender Stratocaster and I'm gonna use my guitar cable here. All right, I just have my guitar going straight into the input one of the Zen Go. Okay, so if you look right there, this is 1A, or excuse me, this is A1. I'm gonna plug it right into that. So the goal is to be able to hear what I'm playing live with what I got going inside of Ableton Live. Now you can use any digital audio workstation. I just happen to like Ableton Live. Now if you look within here, I just have a basic drum beat. It's just a very basic drum beat. So I'm gonna play that. So you can hear, this is just a basic drum beat, so I have something to play to, right? So let's go to Zen Go. Now, since I'm plugged in and I got the gain turned up, you know, you can already hear me. So let's do a few things here. Let's set the gain. Let's go ahead and clear these out. I'm just gonna clear all of these effects. Okay. So we have a clean slate. So I'm on channel one. I plugged in the guitar to channel one. I want to set it to high Z. Then I want to set the gain. All right, so now if you look right here, it says preamp one. Okay, so that's actually the physical preamp that is on the Zen Go. Okay, so that's what I want to actually record. And you can see it's on this first channel. Now, if I go over to DAW in and out, you can see preamp one is going to be record one. We got record one through eight. So these are the eight different things we're gonna be able to choose within our particular software as input devices. So I can see, watch what happens when I play. It shows up right here on record one. Just to show you what that's gonna look like in the digital audio workstation, right here, I have input one selected. Now you can see everything I have that can show up. I have one, two, all the way to eight. So these are the eight different things that I was showing you on the other screen, or I can use them in pairs, but since this is a mono device, I only need to select it, you know, right there. Okay. 
in my digital audio workstation, I don't need to monitor what's going on here. I actually don't want to monitor because I want to monitor everything live through the Zen Go. No perceivable latency, right? So you look right here, I named this Guitar AFX for FX. And then this one's gonna be Guitar Dry. Let's go ahead and go back to the Zen Go control panel here. Okay, now we're gonna put effects on this preamp one right here, right? But before we do that, watch what happens. I wanna show you something as well. Let's go ahead and push play. Now, if you look inside of here, so if you look, record three and four right here, it's actually computer play one and two. And that's why down here, play one and two is really getting routed into record three and four. So this is the kind of stuff that kind of threw me off in the beginning. So once you figure it out, it makes sense. So basically your preamps are on the physical device. Your computer play are actually the output from your software. So check this out. So if you look in your software, right over here are our outputs. So we've got output one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have my master out set to one and two, okay? Computer play one, computer play two, all right? So if you look over here, all right, all of that to get to this point. So this is where this thing really shines. We got everything set up. Once you learn how to do this, it's gonna be very simple to do. You're gonna be boom, 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 running through this, setting this up real fast. So if you look right here, here's where we can put effects in. So I'm gonna go, let me show you that again. So in monitors and headphones, Right here is preamp one, which is the input from channel one. I'm going to go ahead and click that. Here's where we can put AFX, okay? So here's where you can put our audio effects, where we can listen to these effects live. So these effects are gonna give you basically near zero latency. You're gonna be able to hear these effects real time, which is really awesome. So there's a few things we could do. The first thing you're probably gonna to wanna to do is put this tuner on here, right? <laughs> So it might seem like a tuner is a silly thing to have in here, but it's really functional, right? Because when you're tracking your guitar, you want to make sure your guitar is in tune when you're tracking it. All right, so once you get your guitar tuned, you know, you could leave your tuner on there. Or you could just, you know, pu push that X, if you saw that. If you push this X, you're able to clear out that effect, and then you could pick a guitar amp. Let's say you want this Plexi right here and you could pick a cabinet. Say you want this vintage cabinet. So you could pick and choose from the different amps and cabinets. Right, and kind of make your own sound. Now they do have some presets in here. So if you click right there, there's a bunch of different presets as well. So let's just pick the rock one. Right. So depending on what sound you want, you could go ahead and go in here. You got plenty of space to go ahead and, you know, change your sound. You can do a bunch of things like this in here. Uh, but you go ahead and pick what you want. All right, so say I wanted to record that sound. I was like, okay, I'm happy with that, right? What we could do is kind of close this little window here. And let me show you this trick. Okay, so right here, right? So this is gonna be one, two, three, four, five. Right here on five, I can pick preamp one. Okay, so now I have preamp one here on one and on five. So let's click this DAW in and out. If you look, I can record this preamp one right here from record one and from record five and basically have an affected signal recorded and a clean signal recorded. The next thing to do is make sure that this is turned on to five. So now what we could do is practice and then go ahead and record. So I'm just gonna listen to this real fast. All right, say I wanted to record something like that. So what I would do, I would arm both of these tracks. So I would arm this track 
and then push control and then arm that second track. And so what that's going to enable me to do is record that distorted signal and the clean signal at the same time. Now that that's recorded in there, I could basically mute the uh, clean signal. So we can go ahead and hear what we did record. That's what we recorded, but let's say we wanted a different sound with the distortion, right? Okay, so let's say we weren't happy with that and we wanted a different sound. So let's play this one. That's our clean signal. So what we could do is actually route this out, okay? We can route this. So we can put the audio to external out and then pick an output. So we don't want output one and two. We want it to be perhaps, we could put this on three, come back over here, and we could pull it back on one of these. We could pull it back on here, for example. So now, whenever we do play this, Okay, come over here. And pick different settings. Right, that's kind of the preset we had before. But let's say I wanted this plexi, right? Let's say I like that one better. We can have that effect. So now you can start to see the flexibility of this device. It seems complicated because I'm trying to explain it, but once you understand it, it's very easy to go in there and route things from your Zingo to your software, and then you can route it back into the Zingo, add effects. And then if you wanted to, you could actually bring this back in to a, to a channel inside of the software and then record it back into the software. So what you would do is basically bring it in from three, uh, from two, then I would be able to record that right back in to here. Let me show you. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, push record. All right, so I recorded that in there. So let me mute that uh, clean guitar. Then we got that plexi coming in on this other track. Now there is another way to do this within the digital audio workstation. You could just use AFX for DAW. And that's gonna be a separate purchase. Depending on when you get it, you can probably get it with the uh, Zengo. So right now until September 30th, you could get it with the Zengo when you do purchase it and register it. But you do have that option. Let me show you what I mean. So let's go ahead and go back to that clean signal. All right, this dry guitar. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute that one. I'm gonna bring this dry guitar back online. I'm gonna pull this AFX right here. You can see Antelope AFX. I'm gonna pull that right there. And it's gonna give me the ability to pull in effects. All right. All right, so I hope this illustrates how you can use this interface to what fits your needs. So I'm showing you different ways to do things so you could pick what works for you. And that's just the guitar I'm showing you. So imagine you could do this with vocals, you could do this with you know, drums, you could do this with whatever you want. And I'm just showing you the guitar effects. There are uh, you know 37 effects in there. So you got different compressors and EQ uh, limiters and things like this that you can apply as well. Plus, 
If you wanted more effects, they do have a shop where you can buy more effects. But it, included with the Zen Go are 37 effects, which is plenty to get you going. And if you actually utilize these effects, you probably won't need any for a while. And depending on what you want, depending on what you need, the Zen Go may be a good option for you. There's gonna be other ways that you can go ahead and use it, but I wanted to share this with you. Thanks for watching this video. Go ahead and check out another video right here. Click or tap the screen. It's gonna take you to some more videos on my channel. I do appreciate you for watching this. My name is Matthew. Enjoy creating your music. We'll talk soon.